When I first heard whispers that China had secured the rights to Maxwell Chikumbuso's microsonic energy device, I thought it was just another rumor floating through the halls of tech speculation. But then the confirmations started coming in, quiet, careful statements buried inside trade bulletins and energy sector filings that most people would never bother to read. It was subtle, deliberate, and unmistakable. China had just outmaneuvered the United States in a race that could redefine the global energy order. The MSED, or Microsonic Energy Device, wasn't some prototype or speculative theory. It was the real thing, a self-sustaining generator small enough to fit in a backpack, yet powerful enough to energize an entire home, vehicle, or industrial network without external fuel or solar input. And China didn't just buy a license. They bought the future. As the West debated feasibility and demanded peer-reviewed documentation, China quietly moved to secure manufacturing rights, research partnerships, and exclusive distribution in its domestic and regional markets. It was a move that stunned the insiders who knew what this meant, a pivot away from the fossil and lithium dominance that had kept the world on edge for decades. While American analysts were still drafting reports, China had already started integrating the technology into its energy roadmap. Beijing wasn't waiting for validation. They were betting on vision. The first signs of the deal emerged in confidential shipments tracked through Hong Kong's tech export logs. Unmarked crates labeled under advanced acoustic conversion modules began arriving from Africa from a small but rapidly expanding lab once dismissed by Western observers as fringe experimentation. That lab belonged to Maxwell Chikambuzo, a Zimbabwean inventor with a record of breaking every boundary conventional science had drawn around energy independence. For years, his projects, from self-powered vehicles to wireless electricity transmission, had drawn curiosity and skepticism in equal measure. But those who'd followed his journey knew that his latest creation, the MSED, wasn't a myth. It was the culmination of two decades of refining a concept once thought impossible, energy generated from resonant sonic vibrations converted at near-perfect efficiency, China saw what others missed, while Western governments hesitated, demanding endless verification and compliance with outdated industrial metrics. China recognized the disruptive potential and moved decisively. In the corridors of Zhongnan High, the deal wasn't just technological, it was strategic. It represented autonomy. Control over the next wave of global energy transitions, and perhaps more importantly, it meant positioning China at the center of a post-fuel, post-grid economy. Energy had always been the currency of power, and Beijing was now minting a new denomination. The MSAD project fit perfectly into China's long-term goals, clean energy leadership, technological self-sufficiency, and global influence through infrastructure exports. Already, reports from Shenzhen and Chengdu suggest that dedicated assembly lines are being built to mass-produce the device under joint African-Chinese patents. If that's true, it's a historic partnership, a technological alliance between an African innovator and the world's fastest-moving industrial nation. The implications are staggering. Imagine neighborhoods powered without a single cable connected to the national grid, Imagine electric vehicles that never plug in, factories operating without diesel generators, and rural regions leapfrogging into self-sustained electrification overnight. That's what the MSED promises, and that's exactly what China intends to deliver, not in the next decade, but within the next few years. The quiet rollout began with small-scale integration trials inside special economic zones. Insiders suggest these early applications are testing the scalability of NSAID units to power AI-driven manufacturing hubs. The technology, though still wrapped in secrecy, reportedly uses ultrasonic harmonics to create continuous oscillations within a resonant chamber, a system that, once initiated, maintains its energy output indefinitely. It's not perpetual motion, as the skeptics would mockingly suggest. It's efficient resonance harvesting, an entirely different category of science. And it's here. 
For China, this isn't just about energy security, it's about technological dominance. With lithium resources tightening and global supply chains under stress, the MSED provides an elegant bypass, eliminating dependence on batteries and fossil energy storage. It aligns with Beijing's dual carbon goals, transforming them from political slogans into tangible industrial advantage. Meanwhile, across the Pacific, Washington remains locked in bureaucratic analysis. The same committees the once debated electric vehicle subsidies and rare earth sourcing are now scrambling to understand what China has actually acquired. The U.S. missed its window not because it didn't know about Chikambutso's work, but because it didn't believe in it. American institutions bound by skepticism and red tape waited for perfect proof before action. China acted first. And in doing so, it gained what analysts are now calling resonant leverage, control over the first viable non-fuel energy technology with scalable industrial potential, scalable industrial potential, real to the cult, different industrial potential, actual and brevianthra and spurs viable, in Europe the loose is still viable, free solid potential that's scalable, industrial potential peta out the first, in Beijing, the move is being described internally as a quantum energy leap. But in Washington, it's being called something else entirely. The next Sputnik moment. Only this time, it's not about space. It's about power itself. Behind closed doors, think tanks and intelligence circles are beginning to model what global markets might look like if MCDs become mainstream. Oil would lose its supremacy. Lithium prices would collapse. Grid-based energy monopolies would fragment overnight. Every household could theoretically become its own power plant. For nations like China, already leading in infrastructure exports through belt and road, this represents an opportunity to redefine global dependency. Instead of selling solar panels and turbines, they could export self-powered microgrids, instantly deployable in developing economies. Africa, Southeast Asia, and parts of Latin America could be electrified as a fraction of traditional costs, all under Chinese manufacturing contracts. It's not just energy independence. It's influence independence. The U.S., accustomed to leading global energy narratives through petrodiplomacy and tech dominance, suddenly finds itself watching from the sidelines. In Silicon Valley, whispers have already begun that private investors are now chasing secondary access to Chikambutso's patents through shell firms and offshore ventures. But it may be too late. China has already sealed exclusive manufacturing partnerships that could last decades. Even if the technology spreads, the origin of scale, the machinery, the know-how, the production control will sit firmly within China's industrial ecosystem. That's the genius of their move. Not just acquiring technology, but embedding it into the national blueprint before the world even realized its worth. It's reminiscent of how they approached solar, dismissed it first, then mastered and mass-produced until the West had no choice but to buy from them. History, it seems, is repeating itself. Only this time, the stakes are far higher. If the MSED delivers on its promise, the very concept of end to the end of end of end to the end of end end to the end to the the very concept of end to the end end to the end of the war, to the legings, the very concept of end to the end the technology scalability could dwarf the industrial revolutions of the past. Factories, vehicles, and even military systems could operate with indefinite endurance. The potential for dominance in every economic and defense sector is enormous, and the timing couldn't be more perfect for China. As the world transitions away from carbon, the void between old and new energy paradigms is widening, and China is stepping into that void with precision. Chikambutso's invention isn't merely a breakthrough in physics, it's a geopolitical pivot point. In the labs of Harare, the future was born quietly, away from the spotlights of Silicon Valley or the corridors of Washington. And now, that future belongs to Beijing. I've spent weeks 
tracing the footprints of this deal from leaked customs data to cross-referenced shipping manifests, and the evidence paints a clear picture. China didn't stumble upon this by chance. They've been watching Maxwell Chikambuzo for years. Advisors tied to Tsinghua University and state-backed innovation funds reportedly began engaging his team as early as 2023 under the guise of Renewable Energy Research Exchange. By the time the world took notice, the contracts were already inked. China's foresight wasn't luck, it was policy. And that policy is paying off in real time? Inside China's Ministry of Science and Technology, the MSED program is being aligned with the nation's 15-year innovation plan, categorized under Strategic Disruptive Energy Systems. That label alone signals how high Beijing ranks this development at the same level as quantum computing and AI defense integration. If these classifications are accurate, the MSED isn't just a new product, it's a national priority, a cornerstone of China's post-fossil global strategy. The speed of implementation is what's truly astonishing. In less than six months since acquisition, prototype integrations have already been reported in key industrial testing zones. Early results, though still confidential, suggest operational stability beyond 5,000 continuous hours without degradation. If true, that outperforms even the most advanced fusion and solid-state systems currently under Western development. And yet, the world remains largely silent. Mainstream media coverage is minimal, and the story barely makes headlines outside specialized energy circles. But make no mistake, something seismic is happening beneath that. Quiet. China is rewriting the rules of energy, and it's doing so faster than anyone expected. When the news finally broke into public awareness, it wasn't through a press conference or a government statement. It leaked quietly, almost reluctantly, through a financial disclosure by a Chinese state-backed energy consortium listing resonant microconversion technology as a strategic acquisition. Single phrase was enough to ignite speculation across global markets. Within hours, analysts began piecing together what it truly meant. The MSED was no longer an obscure African innovation, it was now part of China's core technological arsenal, and the timing could not have been more symbolic. As Western economies grappled with energy inflation and supply instability, Beijing was unveiling a device that could make those problems irrelevant. The message was subtle but devastatingly clear. While others argued about how to transition away from fossil fuels, China had already done it. The MSED represented more than innovation, it was the end of dependency. And with it, the start of a new era where the balance of power would be defined not by who controlled the oil, but who controlled the resonance. American officials were quick to respond, at least on paper. Emergency committees were convened, and experts summoned to brief Congress on what they had missed. But the truth was uncomfortable. They hadn't missed the discovery. They had dismissed it. Years of bureaucratic inertia and institutional arrogance had blinded them to the possibility that revolutionary energy could come from Africa, let alone from a lone inventor outside traditional academia. And now, that oversight had cost them the technological lead. Inside think tanks and intelligence agencies, the mood shifted from skepticism to panic. Memos circulated describing the urgent need to reassess national energy security frameworks. But no reassessment could undo the fact that China was already years ahead in deployment. In Shanghai, pilot zones began rolling out MSED-based microgrids. Factories that once drew power from coal plants were now running entirely off localized resonant units. Reports from engineers hinted at something extraordinary, stable power outputs, no emissions and maintenance requirements, so minimal they bordered on theoretical. The implications were revolutionary. Entire industries built around fuel logistics, energy transport and storage would soon become obsolete. And in the heart of Beijing, policymakers were already drafting the next phase, global export.
The Belt and Road Initiative, once focused on ports, railways, and infrastructure, was now evolving into an energy network built on NSAID technology. Instead of sending pipelines and cables across continents, China would send independence. Each device installed abroad would symbolize another nation freed from Western fuel dependence and another tether of influence for Beijing. Africa stood to benefit most directly. Chikambutso's partnership had already guaranteed technology transfer to participating African states. Factories were being planned in Zimbabwe, Kenya, and Ethiopia to produce localized versions of the MSED for rural electrification. It was a stunning reversal of history, an African innovation empowering Africa, but scaled through Chinese precision and reach. In diplomatic circles, the symbolism wasn't lost. The South-South alliance that economists once viewed as theoretical was suddenly real, physical, and powered by a device smaller than a microwave. Meanwhile, in the United States, the narrative fractured. Media outlets alternated between denial and alarmism. Some called it an overhyped pseudoscientific claim. Others quietly acknowledged that China's energy data told a different story. There were no power shortages, no spikes in industrial consumption, and no sign of the strain one would expect in a nation running massive new production lines. Something had changed in the flow of power, literally. And by the time Western corporations tried to replicate the design, the patents were already locked behind international joint agreements. China had secured exclusivity, not just through contracts, but through execution. Every bolt, every chip, every microsonic chamber was now part of a vertically integrated ecosystem. From research to production to export, the entire chain flowed through Chinese control. It was, in every sense, a strategic masterstroke. Maxwell Chikambuzo's invention had found its perfect champion, a nation unafraid to act boldly and move fast. And that alliance was reshaping the technological landscape in real time. Within two years, the first consumer applications began surfacing self-powered vehicles, mobile energy hubs, and modular generators for emergency relief zones. Global response shifted from disbelief to desperation. By 2028, multiple Western energy giants were lobbying for inclusion in the MSED licensing framework. But by then, it was too late to lead. The leadership belonged to those who had believed first. And China had believed. From a strategic standpoint, Beijing had achieved something unprecedented. Technological dominance without warfare, energy superiority without extraction, and geopolitical leverage without occupation. It had rewritten the definition of superpower in the 21st century. The New World Order wasn't about who controlled the sea lanes or oil reserves. It was about who powered the future and at what cost. And China had paid that cost early, quietly, and decisively. Maxwell Chikambuzo's story, once seen as fringe, had now become a central chapter in global energy history. His invention had transcended continents and politics, uniting two forces that the world least expected, African ingenuity and de escalating like the Moorish class, building ingenuity and de escalating. Eric, and Spurfinus, in an inner pre, enters an enhanced narrow leg. Yes, it's a right first, and a crown of her bodies, every was lost. You do. Together, they had built the foundation of an energy revolution that might one day be remembered as humanity's final step toward true sustainability. For the first time, power, real, limitless power, was no longer a commodity to be extracted, but a technology to be shared. And the world was watching, realizing too late that the age of hesitation was over. In a world where energy defined destiny, China had moved first. It bought the future.